Today is September the 5th, and this day, like every day, we are on a journey. In this podcast, we will include readings of scripture, meditation, silence, and prayer. Our readings come from the Revised Common Lectionary. We begin our reading in Psalm 101. Then we go to 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 24 through 41. And we'll finish in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 101, a psalm of David. I will sing of your love and justice, Lord. I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to help me? I will lead a life of integrity in my home. I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house, and liars will not stay in my presence. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. 2 Kings 17 The king of Assyria transported groups of people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Seraphim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria, replacing the people of Israel. They took possession of Samaria and lived in its towns. But since these foreign settlers did not worship the Lord when they first arrived, the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. So a message was sent to the king of Assyria. The people you have sent to live in the towns of Samaria do not know the religious customs of the God of the land. He has sent lions among them to destroy them because they have not worshipped him correctly. The king of Assyria then commanded, Send one of the exiled priests back to Samaria. Let him live there and teach the new residents the religious customs of the God of the land. So one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria returned to Bethel and taught the new residents how to worship the Lord. But these various groups of foreigners also continued to worship their own gods, In town after town where they lived, they placed their idols at the pagan shrines that the people of Samaria had built. Those from Babylon worshipped their god, Sakuth Benoth. Those from Qatar worshipped their god, Nergal. And those from Hamath worshipped Ashima. The Avites worshipped their gods, Nibhaz and Tartak. And the people from Seraphim even burned their own children as sacrifices to their gods, Adremelech and Anamelech. These new residents worshipped the Lord, but they also appointed from among themselves all sorts of people as priests to offer sacrifices at their places of worship. And though they worshipped the Lord, they continued to follow their own gods according to the religious customs of the nations from which they came. And this is still going on today. They continue to follow their former practice instead of truly worshipping the Lord and obeying the decrees, regulations, instructions, and commands he gave the descendants of Jacob, whose name he changed to Israel. For the Lord had made a covenant with the descendants of Jacob and commanded them, Do not worship any other god or bow before them or serve them or offer sacrifices to them, but worship only the Lord who brought you out of Egypt with great strength and a powerful arm. Bow down to him alone and offer sacrifices only to him. Be careful at all times to obey the decrees, regulations, instructions, and commands that he wrote for you. You must not worship other gods. Do not forget the covenant I made with you and do not worship other gods. You must worship only the Lord your God. He is the one who will rescue you from all your enemies. But the people would not listen and continue to follow their former practices. So while these new residents worship the Lord, they also worship their idols, and to this day their descendants do the same. 1 Timothy 3, 14-4, verse 5 I am writing these things to you now, 
even though I hope to be with you soon, so that if I am delayed you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. They will say it is wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods, but God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. For we know it is made acceptable by the word of God and prayer. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the people of God. Amen. And now let us take some time for silent prayer and reflection. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies 
that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves for your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me invite you to join us for tomorrow's podcast. We meet each day to journey together into the loving heart of God. You can also join our other podcast, The Daily Radio Bible, where we journey through the entire Bible over the course of a year. But more than that, what we desire most is to experience and have an encounter with the God who is love. Find out more at dailyradiobible.com. The music for this podcast was provided by the artist and composer David Neveu. Find out more about his music at davidneveu.com. And now let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. All righty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.